Hello, just, call, just calling to let you all know that the Ignite newspaper will be released July the 1st, if not sooner, but before then, I just want to make it perfectly clear that, there, that for this paper, there is no one person to praise for this. It's not, it's not one person's work. It is a group collaboration. It is me. I, I'm only one person. I'm only one person who's working on it. I am. I'm. Con I'm. A, I'm only one contributor. There's also Kathy. Say hello, Kathy. Hello. We got Jasmine, who's in the office right now. She's doing something. We can't really get her at the moment because she's busy. We have. Um, and we also have. Um, we also have Jason. Say hello, yep. Jason. Hello, uh, uh, Jason. You're not a kingdom. You're not a kingdom. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta. Um, he's all right. He's a good. He's all right. And we also have, we also have other. We have him contributing to some of the art design and mm. other things. He's done some of the drawings for mm. it. Um, we all and we also and we also have Craig here. Say hello, Craig. How hey, are you, mate? Hello. We. And we have, and we have some people giving their stories. Such we have Neil. We have Neil doing the Angry Birds, and um, right. don't yeah. and don't and not to be confused with the actual game or te or movie. And brand. He's trying to say we're not going to do any copyright infringement, no. so don't worry. Don't worry about that. Yeah. But I don't do things like that. I just do things <laughs> for memory. And we also have and we'll and we, yeah, so we have Neil doing the Angry Birds. Mm. Um. And we have a few people, do, and we have, uh, we, hold, no, hold on, we have a few people doing their um, story, we have John and we have um, Caleb doing some stories on it, and we're going to try and get some other people, and we're going to, and we're going to, and we're going to try and get some other people to, um, to, um, to contribute whatever they want to it. So they, Voice. and Kathy wants me to do, and Kathy wants me to say the line, speak out, because she's doing mm. this business behind the camera. On and, hold on a second, Jason. We'll get to <laughs> he, He's a good. He's a good bloke. Um, and we're gonna try. We're gonna try and get some other chaps. Um, we're gonna try and get some other chaps to um. To um, contribute it to it. And I have mentioned suggestion boxes in the past, and where you can put whatever you want in it. Does not have to be handwritten um, parchments of stories and what have you. It can be pictures it can be comics it can be whatever you want you can even put an apple core into the thing doesn't mean it's going to get published in fact that's another thing i want to remind you all of just because you put a story in doesn't mean it's going to go into the paper right away if at all just want to make just just want to make very just want to make that very clear and i also want to just say once again that this, and I just want to once again say that this is a group collaboration. There, it's not one person doing this. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> um. Oh. 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 Right. Um. Don't pause, do not stop this, but Kathy, what am I saying again? <laughs> okay, you're talking about who is the newsletter for? Oh, that's right, that's right, of course. Complete I tend to forget things at times. Um it's for people with disabilities and for pe and for the general public to be educated. Yeah, you know. Um and for good and Ooh. and personally and yes, and um for good support workers and what have you? Well, good on ya. <laughs> and and if anyone's watching this who's a bad support worker, get good. Hey Caleb, just want to ask you a few questions, yeah. and just remember this is not a name and shame. So first question: Have you ever crossed paths with a bad worker? Yeah, many times. Tell us about that. That all they say. Not all of 
Just uh, sit down on the ass, or it's not doing it if it's lying on the vines. And they're there to do a job. And uh, they do not start, do not get paid. I do not get paid to sit there and do nothing. And uh, if you don't want to do the job, sorry, that's a job. Don't come back. Me? So, tell us about the tell us about the good workers who oh. do what they're supposed to do. Oh, um, they're amazing. I wish it was more of them. Oh, so, sorry, can I just jump in here, Caleb? So, do you think um, the bad workers, there's more bad workers than good workers in your experience? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so, really, support workers have to pick up their game, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Alright. So, tell me, do you know what a self advocate is? Uh, when someone talks for themselves? Exactly. I like that chair. Can I just film that chair? That yeah. is, this is Caleb's new chair. Yeah, well, I'll have to go move back. How are you finding it, Caleb? Really nice. So you can be the same level as up people yeah. talking to them. Love it. Go on, you. Go on. Oh, really. <laughs> Come on, Will. Come on, Will. Come on, Will. Will. Come on, Will. Oh, my God, really? Hello. How are you doing? Very good. Yeah. How are you doing? Hello, this is something that's going to be in the Ignite newspaper. It is entitled, How Not to Treat People with Disability, and it may cause some disagreement. Number one, if they are an adult, talk to them like an adult. And number two, if they are, if they are visible, you have no excuses. Thank you. Bad, bad support workers. If you ask me, I've done a little bit of thinking about the topic and I've concluded that there's only three reasons as to why, some, as, as to why someone would be a bad worker, for lack of a better way of putting it. Reason number one, ignorance. They go into the job with no knowledge, no understanding on what they're doing or the character they're dealing with it besides simply besides simply how to make sure they don't die. They they tend to and they tend to do the wrong thing without even realizing it. They can be easily educated, no problem. There's reason number two, thoughtlessness. Now these are the people who just they leave they leave the person they're supposed to be taken care of on their own, whereas some of them can't be left on their own for even a second. And then they go off and they either play with their phone or socialize or any of that stuff. And and some of them even go off work early because I don't know. And then there's reason number three, that feeling of, that feeling that, that feeling that they get, that some people get when they're in a, when they're in a state of, when they're, when, they, when they're in a position of trust and authority and it sort of goes to their head and they tend, and they tend not to think of, um, too much about anyone else but themselves. Well, that's all I that's all I can think of. Thank you.
Hi John. John, why did you develop the introduction workshop where you teach people how to um, shake hands? Because it's not fair and not right for people just to just ignore me when I'm standing in front of them. So John, you wanted to um, make people uh, realise that it, that it wasn't fair or right for them to do that? Yes, I did. And John, how did it make you feel when you are standing in front of someone and they, they don't acknowledge you're even there? How does that make you feel? I'm important to say... Uh, I want people to get to, to get to know me, have a conversation with me. That's all I want. Thank you, John. Okay. <laughs> How exactly do you how exactly do you say hello? How do you say hello to people, Kieran? Hi, I'm Alicia. I'm from Loud and Clear. And the thing that I want out of Loud and Clear is to be a role model and inspire people. Bye. We're here with some of the members of Loud and Clear Queensland. And what do you get out of being in a self-advocacy group? I feel valued. I, I get, I'm heard, I'm listened to. Yep. Learn your skills and friendship. Friendship, yeah. I yep. up myself. Yep. And what they said. All of the above. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Graham, on becoming uh, the Queensland representative for our voice. Well done. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And Graham, what do you think um, you will do with the role? Oh, bring. Um, I'd like to help people with disabilities and bring more things to the table. Okay, so on that. Oh, so so Graham, you'd like um, people to be heard a little bit better? Yes, I would. And and in what areas do you think people with disabilities are just um, not listened to and just not heard? No, they're not. In all in a lot of areas. Without being specific. Okay. And Graham, um, you haven't met the, oh, have you met the other Our Voice uh, reps from around Australia yet? No, I haven't yet. Okay, I'd so like to. I'd love to. I can't wait. Wonderful. Well, congratulations again, Graham, and I'm sure it will be very worthwhile for you and also for everyone else. Thank you very much. Because you're a wonderful role model for everyone. Thank you. Hi, Colin. How much does it mean to you to be in Loud and Clear Queensland? Yeah, what your favourite family and meeting people and getting too well known and the people know you then every now and then. Okay, so so they've become a family to you, Cole. Uh, and, and do you think um, to be a positive role model, it's it's um, good to be well known? Yeah, are you mayor from Bubbin too well known in Bubbin? Hi Tim, why do you think it's important for your poetry to have issues about self-advocacy in it? 
because I feel it needs to break into the mainstream to actually have the right impact to bring about change for people with disabilities. And do you think by writing poetry and lyrics that this is a good way to, to break through? And yes, to, yeah. I believe so. Good luck. Thank you. We're here today, um, we went through the NDIS Code of Conduct discussion paper uh, because the NDIS wanted to know what people think. So first of all, we'll start with Will. Will, what did you think about all the content that we read through? Oh, you mean about the NDIS that you want more? No. All right, um, well, let's um, look at that. Um, there was some pretty... There were some pretty grisly topics in there, but I reckon that all of it was I I, re, uh, I reckon all of it was um was necessary to talk about, even though some of it may have been a bit unsettling for some people here. Sure. So so you think will um, honesty is the best policy? Well. And giving you all the information. In this instance, yeah. Okay. What about, um, you've got down on your note here, uh, focusing on me, um, uh, rushing equals danger, that type of thing, and workers need to be respectful. Do you think it's very, and respectful came up a lot um, in the discussions, do you think that is one of the main uh, points that um, people need to start respecting you? Um... Feel free to chime in, guys, but I'm just going to um, go ahead. Uh, if you're talking about, if you're talking about support work, I reckon, I reckon that, I reckon that a certain, I reckon that trust res and respect and a certain level of honesty is important between, is important between them. I mean, between both of them. Both parties. So, so you're saying the respect should come um, uh, from a worker, say, towards you, but also uh, from the consumer. Are you you're the consumer of the service? Yes. You, you think the consumers actually um, yes. should give the same level of respect back? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, yeah, like if you want, if you want to be treated with respect, you've got to give respect. It, it's because, because you think about you think about it for a second. I'm talking to you, person oh. behind the camera. Oh yes, the person behind the camera. <laughs> yes. Person, the oh. person, oh, whoever, oh, whoever's yeah. watching this right now. I'm I'm talking to you directly. Um, do you really think um, if someone didn't re um, treated you with a lack of respect and expected respect respect in return? Would you want to oblige them? Would you really want to oblige them? No, no you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't feel like treating them with any kind of respect unless it was your natural instinct. But, but that's why. That's why respect works both ways. Like, that's why. If you want respect, you have to give respect. There's. It's. It's the. It's. It's the only sense. It's the only sensible rule. Yes. I'm finished. And also, um, I think it was John brought up um, that it's good to know that the code of conduct um, is in place um, about if you need to complain about anything that you're covered and that you won't be uh, persecuted against. Um, so I think that's very important that you feel safe, that you can question and you can complain. Mm. And that's sort of all documented there. Okay, anything else to add? Anything else to say? Ah. Hi, this is Kate from Loud and Clear Queensland and Kate's going to tell you in five easy steps how you too can start your own self-advocacy group. Hi Kate. Hi. Okay, step number one. Get friends together. Step number two. A time and place as your meet. So pick a time and a place to meet. Yeah. Step number three. Um, what do you do at your meetings? I, uh, uh, you talk. talk. And what do you talk about? Do you talk about everything? You talk about anything. Okay, step number four? Um, you get a job. So everyone um, in the team have, have a role or a job. And Kate, can you tell me some of the jobs in Loud and Clear Queensland? Okay, normed, normed like a fallows, can, make biscuits, um, team, he talked to March, join the eye in the office, and Captain Ego. Oh, okay. And step number five? Um, everything's done. Everything's done and you start again the next month? And it's again next month. Okay, thank you, Kate. And is there anything you'd like to say about Loud and Clear Queensland? We're here for you. Nev, do you think it's very important for people to speak up? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and is it um is it their right to speak up? Yeah. And what happens, Nev? What happens if um a self advocate speaks up and someone doesn't listen to them? What should should they do then? They should learn about agency. Learn about agency and speak up. Yep, yeah, they should learn about advocacy and speak up. Yeah. So, do you think? Um, do you think if someone doesn't listen, though, when you speak up, do you think you should just be quiet, or do you think you should keep telling them and keep talking? Keep telling. Them. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Nev. Josh, with your Weather Channel, how yeah. many people, do people subscribe to that? People, well it's a join group, so you just mm. get on there and join and oh, follow. Oh okay, and, and how many followers have you got? Oh, almost 3,000. Oh my goodness. Yeah, quite a lot. 
Oh, okay. More than you can count on your fingertips. Yes, definitely. And, and Josh, it's just really wonderful for, to see someone who um, is following their dreams, I suppose, and achieving great things. Yeah, and, it is. And what would you say to someone out there who perhaps thinks that they can't do something? I, I'd say don't give up, you know, there are, there are ways of working around it. Um, if you're really into something and you really think you can do it, then, you know, just give it a crack and see where it ends up. Of course, I didn't think I'd be doing this with my Facebook weather page. I didn't think I'd be where I am today, but, you know, over practice and over time and learning, you, you get used to it after a while. So. If someone's really into something, then I reckon they should go for it and don't let anything hold them back. I think that, well, that's a really good role model, isn't exact, it? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Right. Can you, um, can you think of any, any other questions we should ask? Ooh, what other questions? Go, okay. Is there anything that you'd like to say, um, Josh, for people out there? Um, I think I've pretty much covered you everything. Have, you have, you have. So, so the message is, um, if you follow your dreams yeah. and see where they take you. Yeah, pretty much. Go hard or go home. Love it. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. No. Hello, this is Peter Parks from QDN. Good on you, mate. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for having me. It's been uh, an honour to come here today. What uh, what questions do you have for me? Why is it so important to have a support group for self advocates? I think the most important thing is that what QDN is trying to do is to help people. Um, they have everyone today has a lot of people telling them what they they need to do or what they should be doing, and um, um, we want to make sure that people um, are saying what they want. Um, that what, what that they, they have all the options given to them, and that's probably where a support group comes in, because we uh, we uh, are financed by the National Disability Insurance Agency. And they're helping us. They're asking us to make sure that everyone is knowledgeable about uh, about uh, what goes on in the NDIS, um, which is rolling out here in um, uh, January of 2019. And um, yes, we we just want to make sure that everyone knows what's going on and asks for things in their plan that they want, not what other people want for them, but what they want. Speaker, why don't people listen to me? That's a that's the worst form of uh, uh, human emotion disregard. I mean, people people uh, um, don't listen to you, and, and you've got a lot to say, and you've got interesting things to say. Um, people not listen to you is just not acceptable. And um, I was pleased to hear before you, that you had a signal for them. You know, when you hold up your hand and you say stop, um, that I have I haven't finished. Um, and I've got more to say. Um, that's what any any person in the disability world is who is worth their salt. Make sure that people have what they say is heard, and that's exactly how I feel anyway. And it's all QDN feel that way. Um, you know, we speak for um, all sorts of different people, and, but getting from them in the first place what they want, not not what they're told to have. So. Um, it's uh, the people who do that to you, mate, are, are ignorant. They, they don't understand, you know. I wish they would put themselves in your position, um, you know, where how they would feel if no one listened to them, um, you know. Just, uh, yeah, not acceptable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Peter. Good on you, mate. Thanks for having me.
it is because, well, your your story is a bit more. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Powerful. 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 Yes. Powerful. Yeah. Because, because, because it's twenty years, right? Because, because you've lived twenty years um, in a. Uh, um, Supported accommodation. Where they didn't, where they didn't listen, to, where they didn't listen to you, and and all that stuff, and they and didn't give you choice. They didn't, they didn't. Um, um, if I'm if I'm dredging up bad memories, please stop me. Um, and uh, yeah, stuff like that. So I think, so I think, when the, when that kind of stuff comes from you, it actually it actually says something. It actual it it says something. Because it's happened to John. Like, yeah, because it's hap because it's happened to you. Do you understand what I mean? And also, John, I think about the um, standing in front of people and they don't acknowledge that you're standing there. Mm. And that's why you did the handshake workshop. Mm. Okay. So um. I'm, we're, we're here to introduce Ignite, and this is the team that um, helped you. All, all, all did it. We all did it. Group. As a group, yes. And there, and there was no arguments. So. True. Yes. Yeah, so, um, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? My, my name, my oh. name is, my name, my name is Jason. My name is Neil. My name is Carol. Okay. What and have you learned um, some things doing the self advocacy newsletter? Well, a little bit, uh, but I we'd think, like to learn I did, a bit I did, more. I, I think I did some um, cut in comics of, of the wheelchair coming straight up. You up, did? Yeah, up from you the did. air. And the man going like this, and the wheelchair coming towards, hitting him on the head in, in, in the water, and, and then after that, there's. There's no, no in the water underneath, underneath the water. That's right. So everyone's actually brought their own strengths to the newsletter. Yes. Yeah. Oh, um, what I've learned. Yeah, uh, what have you learned? I don't know. This and that. Anyone else? No problem, bro. Um, I'm very proud to pull. It's important. Yeah, it's very important that people know. That's right. That people don't know where they can go. No. Yeah, no. Caleb, that's actually very, very important. That yeah. this is a way for um, people to find mm -hmm. out just what is happening and, out there and, and what has to improve. With, oh. And people with disability. They need to start speaking up now? Yes, I do. People with disabilities should speak up. Oh, but people just walk off for us. Yeah, that's And, and I'm getting a really fair difference. That's right. So if you don't speak Neil. up, people will, um, like um, Caleb says, walk over the top of you. Yeah? yeah and I'm getting a really fair difference. Yep. Yes. We advocate, we're advocacy supporting each other. Yes. And Will, any final goodbyes? <laughs> Goodbye. See ya. Bye. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Goodbye, darlings. <laughs>